Hello everybody and welcome to the 13th video in our series of videos on war and peace in Europe between the years of 1920 and 1945. Today we are looking at our fourth video on World War II and we are going to be looking at the war in the Pacific Ocean. As always we begin with our learning outcomes so by the end of this presentation you guys should know three things about Japanese foreign policy before the war with the United States. Second, you, sh you guys should know why Japan attacked the United States at Pearl Harbor. And third, you guys should know what happened at the Battle of Midway and what strategy the United States used after the Battle of Midway. As we saw in our video uh, highlighting the weaknesses of the League of Nations, Japan invaded Manchuria in northern China in 1931. Uh, so this showed the uh, inability of the League of Nations to stop aggressive policies from, from nations. Uh, and this was a very aggressive policy by, by Japan. Japan had very little uh, farmable arable land in its own country. Uh, so it uh, invaded Manchuria, Manchuria and renamed it Manchukuo in 1931. In 1937, war broke out between Japan and China again over something called the Double Seven Incident or the Marco Polo Bridge Incident, uh, in which case Japan invaded the rest of China. The war started because, as we said, Japan had this imperialist policy. They wanted to expand its influence politically and militarily. They wanted to secure access to raw materials um, such as food and labor and, um, you know, oil and, and just resources that the Japan didn't have on its own islands. Quite quickly, Japan took the major cities of uh, China. They took Peking, now known as Beijing. They took Shanghai and they took Nanking. Uh, as you can see from the map here, uh, Japan occupied all the areas in that blue color there. Um, Nanking was a particularly violent attack. Um, it's known as the Nanking Massacre, and it took place between December 1937 and January of 1938. It was a six-week-long attack on the city, uh, and it's estimated that anywhere between 50,000 and 300,000 civilians were killed. Our numbers are quite um, uh, not exactly solid on this, um, and there are different accounts of how many people were killed, but certainly it would be safe to say upwards of 100,000 civilians were killed in these attacks. Um, Japan continued its military conquests after it took um, the parts of China, as you can see here. Uh, they moved into Indochina, down here, which had belonged to France. France, Vichy France, very reluctantly uh, agreed to this as um, Japan were uh, in military alliance with Germany at the time. Speaking of that, Japan and Italy and Germany, they signed a defensive military agreement uh, in known as the Berlin Pact on the 27th of December 1940, that if one of them was to go to war, that they would help each other out uh, in these attacks. Um, Japan then made a big play. Japan decided that they were going to uh, attack uh, the American U.S. Pacific Fleet, which was stationed at Pearl Harbor, which you can see Pearl Harbor right here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, which is circled. Um, so why did Japan attack um, America? There was two main reasons. The first one was that the U.S. was not happy about Japan's military expansion in the Pacific. Um, they didn't want Japan to become too powerful uh, in the Pacific. It conflicted with American interests. So America cut off essential supplies to Japan, stuff like oil. And this would stop Japan's uh, ability to be able to continue making war. Another thing that, uh, another reason as to why Japan attacked the Americans is they wanted to invade Southeast Asia, which was full of the resources that Japan needed. And to do this, they decided to try to knock out the United States as a power from the Pacific Ocean. Uh, one of the most famous quotes um, is from the US president at the time, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Um, he went and he addressed the nation after the attack on Pearl Harbor, and he called it a date that will live in infamy. Uh, so on the 11th of December 1941, four days after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the United States declared war on Japan. It allied itself with Britain, uh, and then Germany and Italy uh, decided to declare war on the United States as well. The day after the Pearl Harbor attack, uh, Japan invaded Thailand, uh, known as Siam and Malaya down here. Uh, 
to, to try to get the resources. So they moved in from Indochina, which they had taken on the 22nd of September 1940, and now they moved in and took these two places here. By 1942, Japan had conquered most of Southeast Asia. As you can see here, all the areas uh, in red uh, were conquered by Japan. Um, most famously, I suppose, they took Singapore, which had belonged to Britain, and they really took it with, with no um, uh, fight back from the, the British army, which really did damage to Britain's prestige in um in, in Asia as this powerful entity that they were defeated so easily by uh, the Japanese uh, it, it busted a lot of the, the myths around um, British power one of the big the big turning point in the war in the Pacific was the Battle of Midway and this took place on the 4th of June 1942 a month earlier there had been a battle at Coral Sea where um, it, it was pretty much a stalemate uh, Japan had now decided they were going to try to really knock out uh, America so they planned the surprise attack at the US fleet on the island of Midway which is again here uh, off the coasts of uh, Hawaii pretty much isolated little area there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean however what the Japanese didn't know was that the US had cracked the Japanese code and they knew that the surprise attack on Midway was coming um, at the Battle of Midway, Japan were defeated um, and they withdrew. And this marked a massive turning point in the war. It was the first big defeat Japan suffered. And also they lost many of their best pilots. They lost a lot of warships. And whereas America are going to grow and their resources, that the natural resources that they have in their country allow them to expand and expand their navy, they have a massive population. Um, Japan is very limited in what it can produce so it can't produce ships as quickly as um, the Americans so losing ships for Japan is quite a big problem just like we saw with Germany when they were fighting in um, Russia Germany couldn't resupply as quickly as the Russians so the US then launched a kind of a two-pronged attack after the Battle of Midway uh, the first one is they went and they attacked through up to the Philippines. You can see here the blue line on the bottom where they went through uh, New Guinea. Um, the, the campaign really started in Guadalcanal um, and they come up and, and take the Philippines and from there they use that as a launching point off into Malaya, then up into Thailand and areas like that. Um, the second policy they use is the blue arrow on top as you can see there where they start taking one island at a time through the Pacific and this is known as island hopping. So by July of 1944, the Americans have taken Philippines. They have wiped out a lot of the areas that Japan have taken in Southeast Asia and are now uh, preparing to invade mainland Asia. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. So by now you guys should know three things about Japanese foreign policy before war with the United States in 1941, whether that is the taking of Indochina, the taking of Manchuria, the invasion of China in 1937 and um, the uh, Berlin Pact. Uh, then you should know why Japan attacked the US at Pearl Harbor and finally you guys should know what happened at the Battle of Midway and what the US, the US strategy was after. Thanks for watching, hope you guys got something good from this video.